Good morning. It is 5.13 on Monday, July 4th. Happy 4th of July to all my American friends. <sighs> I'm having the great debate of whether I should go back to sleep or get up. Obviously, I want to get up and get moving because that's how I am, but I went to sleep at 11.30, which means I've only gotten five hours of sleep, five and a half hours of sleep. So part of me really wants to go back to sleep. I was having a really good sleep. I slept right through the night. <sighs> decisions, decisions. It is 6.30 a.m. on Monday, July 4th. I am all packed up and ready to go. Got one less bag with me, technically not, but um, I squished the bug shelter into the backpack because I could and I don't like carrying separate things. I still have that pad to carry, the chair pad, so I think that will help and uh, didn't have any issues picking my back pack up and stuff, so um, yeah, that's about it. I'm uh, heading out when I got up or uh, when I was filming last, I had mentioned that I was going to go back to sleep. I did actually set my alarm for six o'clock and I laid back down and 15 minutes later I was up packing. I just couldn't do it. I was already, once my brain starts going, I just can't go back to sleep. Um, because it's super early, the sun has just literally come up over the trees. <clears throat> I'm hoping that I see some wildlife. There is a loon on my leg calling. I had some loons calling last night like crazy, which was awesome. And um, I really like to see a moose or something before I head out, but let's see what happens, fingers crossed. Oh, just pushing off, 6.35. Saying goodbye to my beautiful campsite. Thank you, Miigwitch. Scanning the shorelines for moose. So far nothing, but hopefully that changes. Off we go. Paddling through Yorston Lake with the perfect mirror conditions. Not a breath of wind. And the sun has just come up over the trees, warming me. And it is glorious. Just reaching the bend here the top of the lake. I'm just going through the little island section. It is so, so pretty in here. This would be the place to see a moose, I think. Let's see, fingers crossed. It's super quiet. It's 25 after 7. Uh, I've got about uh, maybe half a kilometer left to paddle before I get to the portage. My paddle here on Yorston this morning has been sensational, uh, except that I haven't seen any wildlife or any moose, but oh well. Um, beautiful, calm conditions, mostly mirror water the whole way. Had some fog and some mist rising off the water when I was going through the island area. And uh, I even saw a loon. But no moose. Oh, and the fish are jumping. I saw at least three fish jump. They're like, goodbye. Thanks for not catching me. <laughs> it's really hard to see. Because the sun is just glaring in my eyes. Alright, I finally lost the sun. It's uh, quite high up there for 7.30 in the morning. Um, I believe
believe I have spotted the little yellow sign that I'm looking for. I just have to be careful with this portage because it looks like it intermingles with the ATV road and then it goes off and then it goes back on. So um, we just got to make sure that I don't just follow the road and end up walking endlessly down this ATV road. Meanwhile, I've missed the cutoff to, to turn on the portage. So. A little emergency privy stop there. Um, told you my stomach wasn't quite right this morning, but I think I'm good now. Uh, thankfully, I left my shovel out, so uh, there's the canoe. I've got the backpack on. I'm doing this first. Uh, I have the stadium chair cushion attached to the back there somewhere, and I have both of my water bottles attached. Plus, I'm carrying my tripod selfie stick in my hand, and I don't have the bug shelter to carry in my hand anymore because it's inside the pack, which is a bit bigger, but it's good. All right, so off we go. A little bit of a hill to start here. Not like the uh, other one that I did on Saturday morning from Seagram to Orston. Just looks like a little hill, but you never know. an eye out here on this portage and make sure I stay on it. It was also a bit of a tricky landing. Uh, I had to get out on the log and they were super slippery. Okay, so here's the ATV trail and I have to figure out which way to go. Oh, there's the flagging tape. And I saw the flagging tape, but I still wanted to check the map because you never know. <laughs> I'm going to keep my eye on the map here. But this is the portage so far. Like I said, the TV road. So, not super hard. Well, according to the map, I'm about halfway through the portage and it looks like the road actually goes all the way to the lake. Um, on my map it looks like there's a, another road that branches off to the right, but I haven't seen that and uh, making sure to keep my eyes open, be very diligent so I don't pass by uh, anything that I'm supposed to go down, but uh, yeah. As you can see, it's lightening up in front of me, meaning there's an opening and possibly the end. <laughs> I'm not sure yet, I don't want to get too uh, optimistic, but definitely not a 600 meter if that's the case. So that's good. But we'll see, I keep walking. Oh wow, that was really short. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. That makes me very happy. I was just trying to find out how long that took. It wasn't very long, that's for sure. Welcome to Linger Lake. Been here before. Where's my moose? Oh, I miss them. Yeah, I'm a happy girl. <laughs> it's really awesome when you plan for something to be a certain way. And then when you get there, it's better than what you expected. I love that. Wow. Some really deep, those moose tracks are deep, which means they're very big and very heavy. It took me less than 10 minutes to do that. Here's my tape. That's the second one. It's the one that told me which way to go. Here's the one that I have to go down. And I've got two. trees marked. Bugs are uh, pretty bad in here though. I don't have my head net down, but I have it on. As long as you don't stop, it's 
It's usually not too bad. It's when you stop that they attack you. Maybe when the canoe's on my head, it might be worse. <sighs> cool beans. I'm back and it's 8.04. So it took me like seven minutes <laughs> to get back. That's no 600 meter, that's for sure. Okay, just have to set up the canoe to portage and uh, attack that big hill again. <laughs> And I'll be there in no time. Just wanted to mention the portaging system. I uh, made a video last week about it. Well, it'll be a few weeks <laughs> when you see this. But um, it's on my channel if you want to check it out. Of how I made these foam blocks. Nothing really extravagant. But helps to give people ideas, I think. And uh, just kind of figured out a way to do it and it's working great. I haven't done a ton of portages on this trip, but it's uh, fast, it's easy to put together, and uh, it's working great so far. So I'll keep you updated on it as I use it during the season and uh, let you know how it's working. You can see it here. There's also some uh, footprints, and there's also some uh, very large moose tracks. I don't see a moose, <laughs> uh, but I see the water. Yeah, it took me seven minutes um, to walk with the canoe. So that's pretty awesome. I was anticipating like 15 minutes each way. So that's great. Well, the water's really shallow here. I have a feeling I might have a bit of a, a slog getting out of here. Uh, maybe I should have walked down a little farther, but I didn't. <laughs> so wish me luck. I almost wiped out twice here. I slid here, and I slid when I went to put the canoe down here somewhere. Um, but I caught myself, and I did not fall. Currently 8.21 a.m., and uh, I am about to paddle about a kilometer through Linger Lake to the 240 or 300 meter into the creek. Well, just like the portage, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And I am on the water and not stuck. <laughs> I pushed the canoe up just a little bit, um, maybe about 15, 20 feet, and walked through the shallow water. It was a bit sucky muckish, but not too bad. And then I just jumped in, and here I am. Easy peasy. So many perfect places for a moose to be standing, and yet there are none. <laughs> so sad. At least I saw some footprints. I know they're here somewhere. All right. So find the portage and uh, it was a bit of a tricky access, so hopefully it doesn't give me too many problems. This is just stunning in here. I wanted to wait. I'm like, just do the portage first. There's lots of creek left after. But it's so, so pretty. So pretty. This is the same place that I uh, got in the boat when I came through. It wasn't any better, actually a bit worse. There's tons of sucky muck there. Um, when I came through Thursday, I put the, put the canoe there first, and then I put the canoe here and put all my stuff there, and then I threw it over and jumped in, but oh well, whatever. Got the backpack out. Uh, I think I'll just take it first because it's easier, because it's just right there, and uh, make my way through. I'm going to go that way, and then go that way. All right, here we go through the mm, 240. Just see if we have any That's what happened to the creek. I was like, oh, I wonder if I could try to go up it. No, don't do that. <laughs> That's why. 
can you imagine? Pulling all my stuff over that. Not fun. So here's a look at the portage. Not sure if I filmed it on the way through. But here it is. It is uh, 8.45. And it uh, shouldn't take me too long to get through here. in no time at all I have made it back to the canoe well just about it's like right around the corner <laughs> all right so it took me about six minutes to do the portage with the canoe so it's about right I guess for a 300 meter it should be a little bit less but there was a quite a bit of uphill and it was a little bit dirty and you know full of debris and stuff so I had to watch my feet um, I have got the canoe just about ready to go here. I've got to paddle through the creek now. I've got to do a couple of liftovers up and over some beaver dams that I did on the way in. And uh, then I'll be back at the portage, which will take me to the road where my car is. So not too much left, but uh, I'm taking my time right now because I'm like, I don't want to leave. <laughs> it's about quarter after nine. All right, I'm back on Ames Creek. I'm not too far away now from the access. Not looking forward to those beaver dams though. They were uh, both downhill, so I gotta pull everything uphill. A little bit of work, but such is life. There's a duck or something in the water just up ahead that just took off. Oh, it's really weird. Oh yeah, this guy. <laughs> I was trying to remember this. I'm like, oh wait, where am I? This is the log that I tried to stand on. And uh, as soon as I did, it went down. So I kind of skateboarded through. Do that again. Okay, so push the log down and kind of skateboard. One foot in the boat, one foot on the log, and push up. Ooh. And then soak your whole leg. Oh, and turn before you hit these trees sticking up. There we go. I don't know if that worked, but if it didn't, I won't put it in. Oh, well, there's my first uh, liftover. I think there's three liftovers, two beaver dams, and then just the one right when I got on the water there's that big tree that's down that I had to uh, just drag the canoe through the grass it wasn't too tricky but this one's not too much fun I had a pretty decent uh, way when I went through this the first time and I think uh, if something's not broken don't fix it so I'm gonna go back that way here though that I'll have to uh, just get out here. All right, I got the camera set up on the beaver dam. I think I looks like all of it, so I'll try to record some of it. Try to get rid of anything that's sticking straight up, so doesn't scratch the boat too bad.
problem. I just gotta figure out how to get in. <laughs> Come here, Mo. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to jump. Paddle out. Oh wow, good times. Now I'm in the creek. <laughs> Little bath. Okay. Stuck on something back there. Let go. estimated that uh, it would take me about three and a half to four hours to get out based on what I had to do today. So pretty much on point for that. Just making my way through this beautiful, beautiful creek. A couple of deer flies buzzing around, but nothing too crazy as long as I don't stay still. <laughs> I do remember that now. I was trying to get a video of it and I couldn't get my camera out fast enough and then I just kind of went through. It was too late. Okay, here's the other beaver dam I have to lift over. And there was a whole bunch of rocks here too, I remember. I know because they all marked the same. Yep, there's one right there. It's shallow and there's lots of rocks. And uh, good times. But I'm going against the current now, so my boat is like, let's go the other way. I'm totally with you, boat. Let's go the other way. These socks aren't as long as the ones that I used to have, and um, I don't like that. <laughs> fell. <laughs> it's not attached to anything. It's just standing in the boat. So drop it down, see if it works. If not, whatever. And yes, it's going to make horrible sounds. so much crap. log I know. Oh, sorry. But 
push down on the front of the boat. Back will pop up a little bit and let you go. There we go. Good times. All right, just one more obstacle. We're done. Beautiful Ames Creek. It's a beautiful place to be. It's not a real song, I just made it up. Well, in front of me is the dreaded log. I have to uh, pull the canoe around, I believe. I'm just looking and uh, I actually see the water go this way. I wonder if it goes around. These are the things I do that get me in trouble. <laughs> But, just curious, it's not going to go anywhere, are you crazy? Don't try it. No, you're crazy. Back up, back up. It's like 40, 30, 40 feet away. Alright, be right back. Somewhere very close by, right there, is the access. And uh, that's my landing. Do you see it? No? It's because there isn't really one. <laughs> so, uh, this should be fun. I'm not going to film it because I think I've done enough. It is 5 to 10. Um, so, by the time I get through this portage and get the car loaded up and everything, it'll probably be about 10.30. And uh, that'll be four hours from when I left the campsite at Yorston. So just to give you an idea. And um, that's about it. I feel good. Everything feels good. Hopefully I don't wake up in the middle of the night tonight and I'm crying in pain. Um, hopefully this SI thing is kind of under wraps now. Um, there's a lot of issues as I'm talking. I'm like, that posture. Uh, there's a lot of long time things that I believe have caused this problem. Um, I sit in an office all day at work. I sit in a de at a desk. Uh, I hunch over a lot. I'm always like this on my phone. Um, just some of those things, sitting up straight, um, keeping my legs straight, not crossing your legs all the time. Um, I had knee surgery on my right knee, so I was always favoring uh, the left side and putting extra pressure on it, which kind of got my body off balance. Uh, sitting in the tent always one way, um, leaning over cooking. I didn't have to do all that, thankfully. Um, squatting, using the washroom, um, finding solutions for a better privy uh, so that I don't have to um, bend in these awkward positions that my body doesn't like. And um, lots of exercises and just making my body strong. Fingers crossed, everything's good, and uh, I get out on another trip very soon. I'm sorry I didn't get to see any moose or any animals. Maybe I'll see one driving on the road out. Uh, I've got five hour drive home. Um, so not, uh, you know, a quick and easy trip, but um, it was as far as portaging and getting in, but I drove a little farther so that uh, I wouldn't have to do as much portaging and stuff um, and still be away from people. Except for Sergey, I didn't see a soul all weekend, which was amazing for me. And um, that's about it. All right, Ames Creek, see you later. Thanks for a great time. Uh, just a little bit of carnage, my bag's down there. My tripod, selfie stick's there. Uh, I've got the canoe up there. Basically, I emptied it. I just grabbed all the stuff out and threw it on the ground and then uh, just slid the canoe up there so I could 
set it up for portaging and um, be on like a relatively flat spot. So I'm gonna go down there to grab the pack and I'm just gonna put it on, grab these two things and head to the other end of the portage. Oh, something I didn't take into account because I'm usually carrying all my stuff down is that most of this portage is uphill. <laughs> I just made it to the end. It took me three minutes, four minutes, something like that. I'm just gonna put my stuff down here and then I go get the boat and I'll go get the car. Let's see if my car is here first. Oh yeah, there it is. Right beside, I think it's Sergey's car. I asked if he parked here, but I wasn't really sure. Okay, put things down, go. <sighs> Tired, hot. The deer fly on this road are horrendous. I'm not sure why. Maybe people drive up here and they get out of the car and they start unloading their canoe and they're like, screw this, and then they leave. But once you get in there, it's fine. I'm not sure why it's like that here, but oh well. I'm just walking up to my car. Everything looks good. Tires aren't... Uh, deflated or anything from what I can see. So that's good. I will see you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and love the new boat. It's amazing. I'm so excited to be paddling it this season. And uh, I can't wait to show off the pictures and videos I took this week and I got some really nice shots. So I hope you guys enjoy them. Okay, hope everybody's well. See you soon. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button. Also click the bell for notifications. If you'd like to get more information on the stuff I use on my trips, please check out my website at camperchristina.com. Thanks. Bye.